everybody, it's me, Zach, this is Judy, and welcome back to our channel. Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, and guess what? Yesterday, the new season, season two of the 1,000 pound best friends, or as I like to call it, the 1,000 pound besties, it just, I don't know, I guess it's the same number of syllables, but it just rolls off the tongue a little quicker. Anyways, it premiered our favorite, well, is it our favorite TLC show? It's one of our favorite TLC shows. I mean, let's be honest, I love the 1,000 pound sisters, so, uh, mm, it's one of my favorite TLC shows, and it is back, back, back again to uh, show us the lives of the four besties, the, the Megan, the Tina, the Vanessa, and the Ashley. And I'm so excited to be back here recapping another season of that show, of this show. If you haven't watched before, I did cover the whole entire first season, and also if you like similar shows, I have covered all of, in its entirety, all three current seasons of 1,000 Pound Sisters, and we'll be covering that again once it starts on January 17th. So we're gonna have two whole seasons of the 1,000 Pound Cinematic Universe airing at the same time. It's gonna be a busy time over here on the Zachary Michael channel, you know what I'm saying? I do a pretty good job of getting the recaps out the very next day after it premieres. It's helpful because I have Discovery Plus, and they actually put it on Discovery Plus before it airs on TLC, so I can get a little bit of a head start. You could probably mostly, in some, unless something comes up in my life, expect me to have a recap out about the show the next day. Now, just real quick before we get started, if you don't know anything about this series whatsoever, TLC does a pretty good job of creating their shows where you can just probably jump in and not be too far behind. This episode does have a recap of what happened in season one at the beginning of it, that you can skip if you don't want to watch the recap, but it does have the recap available. And then on top of that, like the show itself reminds you in episode one where each of the women left off in the last season. So you might not get all of the good bits that happen from season one, but they will give you a, a quick update about like, hey, this is where this person is at in their journey. Here's what you need to know. But I will give you a quick overview and then we'll just discuss things as they come up in the episode. So what you need to know is Vanessa and Megan were on a Discovery Plus exclusive show called Too Large, which basically followed people who wanted to lose weight. They were one episode at a time. The people on it were only there for one episode. It wasn't like they covered it for the whole season. And they were on an episode of that where they went to see Dr. Proctor, who was kind of the doctor that tied all of the people who were on Too Large together. TLC saw that and were like, these two girlies are stars. We got to give them their own show on TLC, so they called it 1,000 Pound Besties, and they brought in two of their friends, Tina and Ashley. On the original show, Megan was the only one that got bypass surgery, and she continued to lose some weight, but most of season one was her struggling to lose weight. Vanessa actually did end up getting surgery at the end of season one of 1,000 Pound Besties. Tina was pretty anti-surgery the whole show and also was the person who provided a home for Megan because Megan lived in her basement, so that's important to know. And Tina didn't end up getting surgery but did go meet with Dr. Proctor for a consultation by the end of the season. Ashley had previously had a gastric sleeve and has since gained weight since having the gastric sleeve surgery and she also met with Dr. Proctor towards the end of season one. We also didn't get to know Ashley as much as the other girlies because uh, from what I've been told actually in DMs by Tina and Megan is that Ashley was just busy working her real life job and so she wasn't available to film as much as the other girls. Uh, and so I'm wondering actually if we're gonna see a little bit of a shift in that in season two now that she knows that this is like something she's committed to. You know what I'm saying? And for the most part, that's what you missed on Glee because uh, the first like 10 minutes of the episode really spends a lot of time recapping a lot of that anyway, <laughs> if I'm being honest. So let's get to, let's get to and start recapping episode one of season two, which I think they called something like the wait is over, but instead of spelling it W-A-I-T, they spelled it like, like wait, like how much I weigh. I don't know why I was grabbing my boobulas. <laughs> And one thing I have to warn you about is that if 1,000 Pound Sisters and or Amber Lynn Reed's YouTube channel are shitting and pissing and farting channels and shows, 
then what thousand pound besties is like a sexual innuendo <laughs> type of a show we like our pickles we like them big round like and like, juicy like we like our men like everything's a sexual joke for them which like let's be honest my channel is kind of like that too so i'm kind of into it because you all know i'm always asking like what do you know about a big pickle so we do discover that Megan is still living in Tina's basement with her fiance John, who we actually see, I think, more in this one episode than we saw of him in all of season one of the show. And Megan's basic thing for this season seems to be that she's afraid of disappointing Dr. Proctor and she's been in a dark place since she saw him. And basically the last time she saw him, if you didn't watch, he was like, you're the least successful patient I've ever had or something to that extent. I'm paraphrasing. But basically, he made her feel like shit. But that's chill because Megan is planning a 44th birthday party at a roller skating rink with all of the besties. Megan decided she wanted to do something for her birthday that wasn't centered around food, since that seems to be how they usually get together and hang out. So she was like, listen, besties, we're gonna go to the, the roller rink and then we're gonna film some things for TLC where we show ourselves struggling to get in a booth. Can you sit here? <laughs> Sideways. I'm stuck. You can't even get out. I just gotta say, I mean, I think if y'all are avid TLC watchers, you know TLC loves to exploit a large person and try to get them to fit into places that they know there's no way they're gonna fit. And I have to just call this shit out because you know, because shortly after Megan struggled to get in and out of the booth, they moved over to a place where TLC was clearly set up and ready to start filming anyways. It's clear that they had roped off some area for them to film this segment of the show. You're telling me that a big old production company like TLC couldn't figure out how to uh, find a spot where they could film without trying to force them into booths they knew they were not gonna ever fit in? Get out of here. Vanessa shows up and y'all, she is actually killing it. I have seen like photos and stuff of her here and there on her Instagram. I do follow all four of the girlies on Instagram. But I think I'd only ever seen her face, and you can tell that there is a significant weight loss that has happened for old Vanessa. It's been about six months since my surgery, and I am real happy with the way things are going. And you know TLC shady as hell knows what they're doing when they include these shots of old Vanessa working out. You know exactly what they're doing. I started exercising three, four times a week. These past few months have been so hard. But listen, Vanessa is happy and she, she is ready to go from a caterpillar to a good old beautiful butterfly. Now I get to be the beautiful butterfly, open up and spread my wings. Honestly, truly, I think Vanessa is the breakout star of this show. I mean, she brings the drama or has brought the drama in season one at least. And she's actually been very successful in her weight loss thus far and she's funny, and she makes sex jokes. <laughs> like, all of these are like tick, 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 tick for me. I'm loving it. But then we have the added layer of Megan being a bit jealous of Vanessa and her her success, and she refers to it as Vanessa's honeymoon face, which at first I was like, that's kind of rude to say, but also later Dr. Proctor talks about this like concept of a honeymoon phase with Vanessa as well. So it is possible that she's like doing really well right now because that's what the surgery is intended to do. So I guess we do need to kind of wait and see how it's going to be in the long run. But also Megan is a little bit jealous and it's clear that like, at least in this first episode, just across the board, she's feeling very insecure about her weight and about whether or not she considers herself like a success or failure. And part of Vanessa talking about her own success included her in her little confessional look. And she was like, she's like, I can see the chair, but what she was really looking for was so something else, you know what I'm saying? Can y'all believe that I can do that and see the chair? 
Oh, yeah, girl. Is she really looking for the chair, though? Oh, God, no, I want to see my, but I don't know when that's going to happen. But we'll get to find out how much Vanessa has really lost because she does have an appointment scheduled with Dr. Proctor that we end up seeing later in this episode. So they get to the actual skating, and uh, I want to use the phrase actual skating very loosely because three of the girls didn't even end up skating. And whatever Megan was doing, <laughs> Megan was being pulled and dragged around the skating rink by Tina. They all had little walkers that they could use. And I do, I do understand why that might feel a little humiliating to do, but I also feel like y'all are already there. Like, let's just try it and have fun. So I was a little disappointed that they all backed out outside of Megan because it was what Megan wanted to do for her birthday. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I, I would have been upset. I would have been like, y'all can't try a little bit fucking harder for me. But, but the inspirational music that they played while Tina was dragging Megan's ass around the skating rink did crack me up. You got this, Megan! I feel like you got I'm pretty proud of myself for getting out there and taking a leap of faith and trusting Tina to hold me up. Woo! Go, you got girl! it! Woo! You're you good! Got and I do have to say, I know I just said like, I can't believe they didn't do it, but Vanessa did share that one of her fears was that her little chicken legs wouldn't be able to support her body and that if she did try to do something and she hurt herself, she might get a dangling ankle and then end up bed bound and gain back some of the weight that she lost through this surgery. So I think she was just concerned about hurting herself. And honestly, it sounds like maybe the same for Tina and Ashley as well. If I'm, if I'm giving my, uh, you know, best assumption to like why they didn't want to participate in that. So Vanessa does go and see Dr. Proctor or as all, some of y'all know, I call him Dr. Hottie. So good to see Daddy Proctor back on the TV screen. Back in my heart. Uh, he he is back and better than ever. And of course, she's there to do a check-in post-surgery. And I think her goal, not I think, her goal was 100 pounds. Like, she needed to lose about 100 pounds for Dr. Proctor to feel like she was making the progress she was supposed to be making. At the time of surgery, she was 398 pounds. In this episode, we find out that she is down to 304 pounds. So she did do what was needed to be done. I did laugh because she was trying to show some of like the things that, you know, were non-scale victories that happened. So for instance, she could touch her legs together and she didn't used to be able to do that. But then she was talking about wanting to be able to cross her legs like a lady. My mama always raised me that a real lady sits with her legs crossed and a nasty woman sits with her legs open. But it's been, I'd say 25, 30 years since I've been able to. And I don't feel great about that life advice from, <laughs> from her mom. I don't think sit with your legs open makes you nasty in any kind of way. But you know what? I do hope eventually Miss Vanessa can cross her legs so she can be elegant, you know? So basically, they discuss some future plans for Vanessa. Dr. Proctor wants her to do some weight training. He wants her to lose, I think he said 40 pounds in the next two months. And then also, Vanessa was like, well, what do I need to do to get like some of the skin removed, because you could even see in that previous clip where I showed her butterfly <laughs> motion. And also like, she talked about like the, the essentially the apron from her stomach that she would like to get removed too, so that she could do something like cross her legs a little bit easier. But Dr. Proctor thinks she needs to get down to 180 pounds. So obviously she's got some work to do there and some, some room to, I don't want to say room to grow, that's not the right word, but she's got work to do. She's got work to do. So then the next thing we see is a montage of, I think, self-recorded footage from Tina where she finds out that her house is flooding. And this actually did happen back in April of 2022. I remember when it happened on Instagram, Tina posted and asked for people to donate to a GoFundMe. And uh, I remember, because, well, one, I donated to the GoFundMe. But two, I remember Tina reached out to me. I was like, people are being so rude to me. And you could see that there were people in the comments and things like that calling it a scam. And I've had a history on my channel about talking about people with GoFundMes from the Slaytons to, to Amberlynn and Becky to uh, all kinds of people having GoFundMes. And over time, my opinion about GoFundMes 
I think it shifted just because I realized that like asking people for help with money and things like that takes a lot of courage, especially when you already have a platform, but also that like, you know, nobody has to donate to a GoFundMe, right? Like when you donate to a GoFundMe, you're assuming the best of the people who you're donating to and that they're going to use the money for what they need to use it for, right? So I tried to, uh, you know, shift some of my perspectives about GoFundMes. And at the time I was just like, yeah, you say that you're going through this. I believe you. I'm happy to help. And it's clear from watching this footage that she is devastated by the flooding. Uh, it, it, the recordings of when she's discovering it, she's like clearly very shaken, very taken back. Um, it was kind of like, not kind of, it was hard to watch. Like it was hard to watch her feel like she was losing everything because she mentioned in the show it's her first house she's ever owned with her husband. And so I'm sure it was a lot to experience. Hitting things. And it's just beaten down. It sounds like it's raining. It's pouring out the side of my house. The floor. And the sopping mess because it's got so much water in it. The city ends up marking this house as uninhabitable, so they have to get out. And they actually end up going to a hotel that we'll see a little bit later that is covered by their homeowner's insurance. I will say, at different points of this episode, I was a little bit confused about the timeline when it came to Tina specifically because like in this part, for instance, and in one little small clip later, they show her with braids. <laughs> and for all intents and purposes, everywhere else in the episode, she had like short hair, like a little, a little short pixie cut bob situation type of deal. So I'm not entirely sure. Maybe they were like, clip-ins or an extension or something. Maybe I'm forgetting something, but it was a little confusing timeline-wise. I'm sure Tita could probably clear that up. I, I will say Tita in the past has been in the comments of my videos before, so uh, be on the lookout if she is there. Uh, she might clear up some of this for us. So the next things we see are them living in a hotel or at least moving into the hotel. And y'all, if you were worried that there wouldn't be any pissing and shitting and farting content, Megan's here to make sure that there is. I have bought some things for smell purposes. The poopery. And I bought a can of law saw. I'm not a fart chaser. <laughs> So somehow they're gonna fit eight people. So that's like Tina's four kids, her, her husband, Megan, and Megan's fiance, all in this little tiny hotel room. And according to Tina, they could be there for a month or a few months. They're not really sure what the timeline for that is gonna look like. So obviously this hotel living situation is gonna put a damper on the things that both Tina and Megan are trying to achieve in terms of losing weight and getting on track uh, so that they can please Dr. Proctor. Well, and themselves. I'm sure it's not all about pleasing Dr. Proctor, but you know what I'm saying. Because I honestly couldn't imagine having, like, even as a person that isn't actively trying to lose weight, like, I can't even imagine how I would deal with, like, only being able to eat from a mini fridge and a microwave, you know? And y'all, I appreciate Megan, but she's always just so willing to give these TLC uh, the, the old fat people struggling clips to, to include in the, <laughs> their TV shows. Is that? One, two. Oh, it's a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's <a> Look! <laughs> <laughs> like y'all, you didn't think we got enough when she struggled to get in the booth. You got to show us str her struggling to get in the, the bed as well. Are, are you fucking for real, TLC? So Vanessa, uh, who I really do believe is just like a very kind woman, even though she, we have seen her get angry in the past. She decides she's going to cook some food for Tina and Megan. And also Ashley is going to come over later too. But she's doing it specifically for Tina and Megan since they've been living in a hotel and can't necessarily cook themselves like healthy, fresh food. But before we get to that, while she's doing the cooking, Vanessa has a conversation with her son, Jacob, who we have seen. I think he was only in like really centered in like one or two episodes last season. I mean, he was around but he was never like a focal point. 
outside of those one or two episodes. So Vanessa wants her son to get on the scale um, <laughs> and she brings out the star of the uh, TLC weight loss universe, the Amber Lynn Reed YouTube channel, the Chantal YouTube channel. She brings out the old hello, it's ready scale. All right, step your feet, yep, yeah, right there and right there. And when Jacob went to see Dr. Proctor with Vanessa in last season, he weighed 466 pounds at the time, which was six months prior to when they filmed this particular part of the episode. And when he gets on the scale, he's now 491.8 pounds. So that's like a significant weight gain in the past six months. And Vanessa is clearly, clearly, clearly very concerned about how Jacob's weight might impact his health and, and his presence in her life moving forward. I'm in my 40s. I'm just now getting my together. I need you to get together. I can't lose you. I love you so much. I love you more than I love me. And I definitely understand Vanessa's concern as a mother. I also, I just like grapple and he certainly seems to be old enough to like make some decisions on his own, right? But like, I grapple with like parents who are putting their thoughts about what needs to happen with their kids weight and putting that pressure on them, if that makes sense. Like I, that is, it's just an interesting dynamic between like a parent and child because you know Vanessa means well, but that's a lot of pressure to put on a kid to be like, I don't want you to die. You need to be here to be in my life. You're my child. I don't want to lose. Like, I'm sure that's just adding to his stress. And the thing is, is that nothing about his presence in this part of the episode feels enthusiastic, feels receptive to hearing that. And I just don't know if this is gonna do what Vanessa wants it to do, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? But I do appreciate her sentiment. You know, she she was like, I didn't give up on myself and I'm not gonna give up on my son. I, I love him, I want him to be here. So I do appreciate it. She's clearly very concerned about her child. She is clearly coming from like a good place and, and I appreciate that. Which also speaking of people in her family, <laughs> last season her sister was a big part of the show in terms of like discouraging Vanessa from losing weight and things like that. So I'm curious if she's gonna come back. She was not in this episode, but I'm curious if she's gonna make an appearance in the future. I, I will also say I haven't watched any of the like previews of what's gonna happen this season. It was something I meant to do and I just I didn't so <laughs> so I guess we'll just wait and see if if she shows up so anyways the girlies arrive for the dinner with Vanessa for Vanessa's little healthy dinner situation type of deal and Vanessa so we saw Vanessa making this cauliflower salad and I'm like oh that that's probably a good a good meal and it is a throwback callback to season one because they did tell Vanessa and Megan that they should make potato salad except with cauliflower and I think that Megan tried and it was a disaster. So I, I appreciate the callback, but I am confused about why Vanessa left the cauliflower raw. Well, normally I would probably bake the cauliflower or oh. make it a little soft. And I just did it raw. Yeah. It'll still be fine. Like, girl, when was the last time you ate potato salad and they didn't cook the potatoes in the potato salad? Like, you you ever had a potato salad and the potato was crunchy? What, what are you doing, Vanessa? And Megan certainly didn't like the cauliflower either and had no problem making it into a sexual innuendo. I had to spit it out. Mm. It was too thick and too hard, too stiff. You know, it has to be, it's a delicate piece. Right. And you have to just like, it has to be a certain tenderization. <sighs> You're killing me. <laughs> it has to be a certain texture. We're still talking about cauliflower, right? I appreciate, again, Vanessa's heart is like clearly in the right place across the board. So I appreciate the time she took to cook for her friends who are staying in a hotel. Uh, but girl, <laughs> the raw cauliflower, let's make some improvements next time. 
So basically this dinner turned into a way for them all to check in on how everybody's progress was going. So Vanessa shares that like she has been losing weight but she is still struggling with like the emotional part of it and how she used to use food to cope with her emotions. So hopefully we might get to see some like therapy and stuff happen for her this season. Ashley also talks about how she still needs to lose the 30 pounds that Dr. Proctor gave her as a goal and how she's been kind of going back between like losing it, gaining it, losing it, gaining it. So she obviously needs to get back in line, back in check. But Megan, Megan has decided that she's never, ever going back to see Dr. Proctor again. And it's mostly because of the way that he allegedly spoke to her, like I already mentioned, where he like said that she was one of the least successful patients he's had. And I understand where she's coming from, but I also just want to be like, Megan girl, do you want to rewind to last season where you kept pressuring Tina to go talk to Dr. Proctor the whole entire season until she finally did? Do you want to revisit that conversation, <laughs> Megan girl? So I understand where she's coming from. I also am just like, well, you're gonna, I, I have a lot more thoughts about Megan in this episode, mostly like, girl, do you know what show you're on right now? <laughs> but <laughs> we'll save that for when she really loses her shit in just a few minutes, okay? So Ashley was like, like, oh my gosh, I've been on the TikToks. I saw some, some journals and I think, wow, how fun would it be if I made y'all some journals a la Amberlynn Reed and we logged our food, wrote our feelings down and things like that in these journals. And y'all know how I fucking feel about a journal, but I will say I appreciate at least that it's clear that Ashley made these on her own. They were like just regular old college rule notebooks that she went in and added places to log and things like that. So one of the places in this like notebook that Ashley made is a place to put your starting weight. And so Vanessa was like, all right, bet we're getting that hello, it's ready scale. I'm bringing it out and everybody's about to weigh in together because we're doing this together. We're friends. This is a, a team effort and everybody seems to be down for it except Megan. To be fair, I understand why Megan would want to do it privately. That's her her argument is like, I, I will do it. I just want to do it in private and not share with everybody right now. But it's like, this is the part where I'm like, girly, you're on a national television show about your weight. You don't, you don't think at any point they're going to ask you to get on this scale <laughs> and let people know how much you weigh. That's like the whole thing you signed up for. And on top of that, you already did it. So I mean, I know it's not necessarily just about the weight. It's about like identifying to everybody that she hasn't been losing the weight and she's insecure about that. But it's like, girl, you've been there. You've, you've been worse than you've been in this situation. And honestly, Vanessa's surprised about why Megan wouldn't want to do that. I'm surprised that Megan's even upset about this. Honey, me and this girl have seen each other's booties, titties, and everything. We've seen each other butt booty naked. <laughs> Which, like, again, speaks to what I'm saying. You you have showed worse on national television already, girly. But Megan gets fucking pissed. Well, you can swallow this. Swallow. I'm not doing swallow. it. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done, baby. I'm taking no for an answer. I'm goodbye. I don't want to I listen. love you, but you have to lose weight or you're going to die. Bit. Oh, me the I'm, same I'm thing. I'm done. I'm done. You told me the same thing. You I'm said if I don't done. lose weight. Like, let's fucking go, Megan. Let's go. Fight, 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 fight. I mean, I don't want anybody to actually fight, uh, but I do like the drama. I do enjoy the drama. And that's where the cliffhanger ends. They, they leave us on this fight with Megan, and I 100% expect to tune in next week, and Megan's like, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll weigh myself with y'all. Like, that's how quickly these things tend to resolve themselves. Uh, but, you know, I do like a fight. I do like some drama. If I'm watching reality television, somebody better be fighting and throwing hands. That's all I gotta say. So anyways, that's that's this week's episode. <laughs> that's this week's episode. I feel like I got through things a little bit quicker than maybe I have in the past, but that's because I skipped over recapping a lot of the stuff that was just like reminding you where the girlies were. So if you want to hear all my thoughts about previous 
episodes from last season. I do have a playlist that will include every single time I've ever covered these girlies, and I'll leave that linked in the little i-cards and maybe in a pinned comment down below if you want to go get caught up. And of course, if this is your first time on my channel, uh, make sure to subscribe down below, hit the bell button so you get a notification every single time I post a new video, leave me a comment, hit like, click share, and follow me on all my social media. I had so much fun, I'm looking forward to the new season, and um, I'll see you all next time. Bye!